Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here, as promised, with a little chat about Otto Klemperer's first recording of the Mrs. Solemnus. We've done his EMI studio version, which is actually now Warner, the studio version, then his WDR Cologne radio live version from 1955, and now we're going to talk about the, the version he recorded for Vox with the kind of shaky Vienna Symphony and a not particularly thrilling lineup of soloists. That lineup includes, let's see, Ilona Steingruber. There's a household name for you. Um, and Elsa Schurhoff. And let's see, Ernst Maikut and Otto Wiener. Yeah, with the Academ Academic Corps, the Academy Corps, the Academy Corps, and the Vienna Symphony. Now, how wonderful do you think this is going to be? Well, let's, let's be honest. It sounds a little better than the 1955 one. It was recorded, I think, around the same time. Let me know, 1950. Vienna in 1950 and released in 1951. But it does sound a little better than that live thing, not a lot better. Let's, let's be very, very, very honest. First of all, in 1950, Otto Klemperer um, was sort of in recovery mode. He had not yet become the grand old man of, of German music. He was a, a much quicker conductor than uh, he later became. These performances are zippy. And for that reason, a lot of people like them because they're fast and they're exciting for that reason by virtue of being fast. I think that there is much more to excitement than mere speed, like the thrilling excitement of his studio recording, which I think is one of the most exciting things anyone ever did because the singing is so fabulous, the textures are so clear, the rhythms are so trenchant, and all of that, to me, equals excitement. Here you have, I mean, from the very opening chord, some really slovenly ensemble. The Vienna Symphony Orchestra, well, people say, well, it was, you know, the, the, the you know, weaker, younger cousin of the Vienna Philharmonic. Well, that's not really the point. The point is the date. We're talking 1950, right after the end of the Second World War, where all of Europe was in a reconstruction phase, and European orchestras at that period, frankly, sucked, at least according to the standards they would later achieve, and according to the standards of the American orchestras, which had avoided the depredations of war, by and large. That's why Walter Legg founded the Philharmonia, because he wanted one really good orchestra at a time when Europe's orchestras were in a rebuilding period. It's not their fault, but the Vienna Philharmonic in the 1950s was also nothing special. As the recordings amply prove, they sounded seedy, all of them. Berlin, under Fortwängler in the 1950s, sounded seedy. It was only at the end of the 1950s and the beginning of the 60s when they began to recapture some of their, their prior luster. And forgetting prior luster, the fact that these orchestras simply were, were being subjected, thanks to Toscanini and other artists like him, to higher standards. And they had to, it took a while for them to get there. It really did. It was like, you know, Tiger Woods in golf. You know, some guy comes along, he just does everything better, and gradually everyone else catches up. So you had two factors at work. You had the war, and you had the fact that that standards were getting higher all over the world. Young players were coming in who were fabulously gifted, and you had cranky old conductors who also had to acclimate to those standards, and Klemperer was one of them. He was definitely one of them. And in addition to all of those factors, you had what was going on with Klemperer himself because he was manic depressive. And depending on whether he was in a high phase or a low phase, um, his performances could be very, very different, whether he was manic or whether he was depressive. He made most of his best recordings when he was depressive, according to Walter Legg. But in any case, this is a thoroughly mediocre Mrs. Solemnus. The chorus is bright-toned, severely lacking in tenors and basses on the bottom end, 
really lacking in tenors and basses at the bottom end. There are moments at the end of the credo in parts of the Gloria. I mean, they're, they're doing their best, but they sound too small. They sound too bright. There is no blend, so to speak. The mono recording is extremely mono. I, you know, I, I, there were people who in the commentary said, well, there was an earlier Klemper on Fox. It was far more exciting than his remake. Well, no, it's not more exciting than his remake. And there is no way in hell it's a better performance. And now I have to talk to some of my regulars. Listen, you bunch of altacockers, as we say in Yiddish. We're all a bunch of old farts. Some of you are older and fartier than I am. I'm only in my 60s. There is a huge tendency to, to like the things we heard when we were younger, for whatever reason, for whatever reason, or to imprint on a performance that's old and grotty and crappy or that, you know, has been superseded many times or alternately, for whatever reason, it wasn't a work that mattered too much in our life or we didn't spend lots of time listening to every single new recording that came out. But trust me when I tell you, all you altacockers, that there are better Mrs. Solemnuses available by Klemper and a lot of other people. And it, it, it is it is a, a disservice, I think, to newcomers and younger listeners to hold out these historical objects of patent mediocrity in so many ways, sonically in terms of execution, even if the interpretation is wonderful, which in this case, it's it's not wonderful. It's, it's good. It's good, solid interpretation. But, you know, I mean, to hold that out as as a standard when there are dozens, if not hundreds, of other recordings of major masterworks which are just demonstrably better all over the place is is I think I think that's wrong to do, and I think we have to be very very careful about that about the kinds of things we recommend and why we recommend them, and we have to be honest about our own experience, you know, our own our own our own experience of the work, the importance it's had for us in our lives, how many different performances we've heard, you know what what we hold out as our models, what our standards are, all of those things. You know, they all matter. And so, yeah, here it is on Vox. It's coupled with a fifth and sixth symphonies, um, neither of which are better than his later Philharmonia versions, especially the Philharmonia monos, which are fantastic, from the mid-50s, just a few years later. I, you know, it made a big difference to have a great orchestra. It made a big difference whatever his state of mind was just a few years later, to have a major record company that also had its own quality image. Vox was a wonderful enterprising label. You know, it was run by a member of the Mendelssohn family, the real Mendelssohn family. And they did their best. They did their best on a shoestring budget. But that's what you get when you're on a shoestring budget sometimes. In the 50s, right after the war, all of those factors matter. So yeah, here it is. And you can do much better by cleverer and by others. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.